Yeah, man. Hello, my name is Miguel. Come take a journey with me while I make this new recipe, chicken tomato stew. All right, so you're gonna need half scotch bonnet pepper, six plummy tomatoes, one stock scallion, a medium-sized onion, three between four garlic cloves, piece ginger, quarter piece ginger, quarter inch piece ginger, tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon dried parsley, one tablespoon dried basil, oregano, teaspoon of oregano, two whole cloves, marjoram, teaspoon of marjoram, half teaspoon rosemary, pimento berry, quarter teaspoon pimento berry, tablespoon of white distilled vinegar, and oil for cooking and salt. Oregano, you only gonna need a half teaspoon of oregano, and a pound a chicken's thigh and a chicken's leg about a pound chicken one pound I'm gonna start by preparing the vegetables and the herbs on this lay them out on this plate wash the skin of the ginger properly the skin of the ginger carry minerals you can leave some of the skin on All right, so grind the rosemary fine. If you have a grinder, use it. A teaspoon or half, half teaspoon of grinded rosemary. A tablespoon of basil. And remember now, you can use any of these herbs fresh. Just chop it fine. Oregano, half teaspoon oregano, marjoram, a teaspoon of marjoram, two old cloves. Keep the herbs. Well, keep the spices separate from the herbs. The spices or the pimento berries and the um, oil clove. So measure and put aside quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries. Now measure and lay on the plate one tablespoon of dried parsley. You can put all the herbs together and keep the spices separate. Now, with the garlic, peel the garlic, cut off ends, trim spoilage. Like this one, you see? See that big brown dent? You gotta trim it off. Scallion. Remove dying leaves. Cut root end. Cut off the tip of the leaf that's dying. Now with the onion, 
peel onion remove just the brown skin only remove the first layer if it's boiling Now with the tomatoes, cut off the stem end. The riper the tomatoes, the better it is for this meal. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. salt. I'm considering what to do with the salt because I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna use a table we're gonna use a tablespoon and all but I'm gonna add half to the chicken and half to the stew but I'm let it wait. Alright so we're gonna put our prepared ingredients aside until later. Now this is my least favorite part. It's not even my favorite part. Alright so get a bowl Add some water, add about three or so tablespoons of distilled white vinegar. Now with this mucky looking chicken thigh and leg, we're gonna prepare it. You see how mucky and disgusting the thigh tends to look? You gotta spend time and clean the thigh more than any other chicken part. All right, so do as you see me doing and use your thumb, get between the chicken's thigh and bone part and remove clogged blood. Trim off the butt part. Trim the fat that's right around the chicken, that tends to be right around the chicken's thigh. Every single chicken's thigh that I prepare, they always have a, a gathering of fat right around the chicken's thigh. And in between the middle, in the in between the middle of the chicken thigh, I always have a lot of fat there too as well. So you gotta get between there. This is a perfect demonstration of a very bad <laughs> chicken thigh. So that way I can really show you how to get rid of all of the muck. I don't know if you can tell, but I can smell. It's an old chicken. It's not spoiled yet, but it's old. You see, what I notice these days, there's a lot of groceries, supermarket, wholesale. There's a lot of com a lot of companies are groceries or market or whatever you want to call them that's competing for our sales and plus you have the market all right so strip off all the skin off the leg and so forth and make sure you clean off all the fat we're gonna rinse it again i'm throwing this water off i don't know if it's like that where you you live but where we live we don't have a problem getting things there's so many stores selling food Supermarket, so many. Every other block there's a supermarket. They come like church these days. Um, and and every town area there's a bunch of old sales. They used to be just like in a major town. Now they're in every little city, every little town, every city town. You see a old sale, plus a couple supermarkets and a few old sales. Always. If no other business, you always see those two things. Alright, so you saw me get a fresh water, a bowl of water. I added, I added some more, or a couple more drops of white vinegar, tablespoons, and I'm washing in between this chicken's thigh and the chicken, chicken's leg properly. 
All right, so this is what you want. You want a clean, fresh looking piece of chicken's part. All right, you can fry the chicken with the bone and do it. You don't have to do debone, but I'm deboning today. So this is the chicken's thigh. I have a, the right knife for the boning. It's a sharp, sharp blade knife where I'm holding the handle and not the blade. So I can get between the chicken's flesh and the bone and kind of trim the flesh off the chicken's bone. Deboning the chicken. So do as you see me doing and debone the chicken. All I'm doing really is just rubbing the knife between the chicken's flesh and the chicken and the bone. When I get to a spot like here now, like where you see that um, collagen, where you see the collagen, I just cut around the collagen, cut it off because I don't want the collagen in my in on my chicken. So that's the idea. Now what I like to do with the, 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 the drumstick is just make a circle, cut around the, the top part where we hold with our hands. And then make a line straight down and then kind of use the knife and put between the chicken's flesh and the bone and then kind of trim off the flesh. The chicken's flesh off the bone. When you get to where the collagen is, the joint, you just cut around it. All right, so that's the idea. That's what you want. All right, so this is our boneless, deboned chicken. So now cut strips. Let's say about just find a, a, a length and cut alongside the chicken. It doesn't have to be any specific length. All you need is just to find a, the length of the chicken and cut alongside it. Like like I'm doing. You don't want too small of a piece, say about two inches inch thickness, about an inch thickness, like your pinky. It should be as as big as your pinky, your small finger. All right. So once you do that, you add your your chicken flakes in a bowl. And then slice the onions and add it over and place it over the chicken pieces. Now I'm adding half tablespoon sea salt. I use sea salt. So kind of use your hand and kind of massage the vegetable, the onion with the, with the salt into in pieces. Then use a lid, cover the bowl, sealed, allow it to marinate for 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes. Now forgot to grind these three garlic cloves. So do as you see me doing and grind your garlic cloves to puree. Or you can mash them with a, with a knife. With a flat, the flat part of your knife. Like you always see me doing my other videos. And dice the scallion fine. 
this is my last piece of scallion but you use a little bit more find a, a stock of scallion all right this aside for later now in a different bowl add water and sprinkle several drops of distilled white vinegar in the water and rinse your tomatoes properly all right for some of you guys who, is, who are against using the skin of the tomato which i believe is that's where most of the nutrients are you can always put the tomato in hot water and then put it in cold water and strip and peel off the skin or you can just use a small little knife like i'm using and then peel it off patiently peel it off all right so now chop or cut the tomatoes in one eighth what I like to do is cut it in half cut that half piece in half and take one piece and cut that in half so in other words cut it in in quarters then one eighth and then cut the quarter pieces in half do as you see me doing the riper the tomato the better it is for this meal so once you do that you just place them back in a bowl until ready for cooking now that we decide what we're going to do with the salt the other half of the tablespoon in all we're using one tablespoon of sea salt you just put the salt aside and have it ready and now Put to heat a saucepan. I'm using a medium sized saucepan. Put the stove's gauge on four. Be sure the saucepan is dry. Or in other words, allow the saucepan to get hot for a minute. Now, get ready. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to separate the onions from the chicken pieces. We're getting ready to fry the chicken pieces. So do as you see me doing, use a fork, a cooking spoon in your right hand and then kind of hold the chicken with your left hand and kind of, kind of shake off or rub off the onion. After a minute or so and no water is in the saucepan, add enough oil, say about half cup of oil. For this amount of chicken that we're cooking, you just want enough oil to fry the chicken. So we're going to throw off some after cook. After the chicken is cooked, we're going to remove most of the oil. After a minute between two and the oil got hot, enough the stove gauge is on four medium low add the chicken pieces to the eating oil and uh, shuffle the chicken pieces on the pot's bottom and allow you have to allow the chicken to fry before you before you be able to move it don't move it allow and the peace ginger add peace ginger after six minutes 
plain chicken pieces. You gotta kinda, it's gonna be sticking a little bit, but it's okay. Just use just the cooking spoon and kinda if it push it away from you that way when if it should splash oil it won't splash on you so you know so I use the back of the spoon and kind of push the chicken pieces away from me that's what it should be so once the chicken pieces are separated from the pot's bottom you just kind of shuffle it in the oil and be sure it's flipped and allow those gauges on four medium low I don't remember if I said but that was six minutes earlier now it's eight minutes all right so these chicken pieces would have been cooked in six minutes but I'm going for the eight minutes the stove's gauge is on four I'm not cooking it on high and I kind of like when my chicken pieces have this kind of golden color all right now you saw me remove I just removed 95% of the oil to so do the same because all you really need in the saucepan is half a quarter cup I use coconut oil add the chopped onions now stir in a few times saute the onions as well flavoring the chicken pieces About 10 seconds after 15 the most add your chopped scallion all right this is where I'm going to show you how we're going to maximize flavor from the pimento berries and the old cloves without having it in the meal so shift the onion and the chicken to one side of the pan and kind of tilt the pan as, as if using a wok where the oil is you add the berries and the old clove and just allow it to saute for about two three minutes the most flavoring the oil After that, use a spoon and remove the berries, the pimento berries. Oh, I did say turn. I didn't say, but you turn the stove down while you're doing, while you're burning the, while you're flavoring the oil. All right, now turn the stove back on four. Add the mashed garlic Allow sauteing Allow the vegetables to saute Add in additional flavors Now add your herbal Mixtures, mixture of herbs. That was the salt. We're not gonna add the salt yet. Now stir the herbs in, coating the chicken pieces ever so lightly. Then right after that, take the chicken pieces out. Now you can turn the stove down if you want, if it's if it's cooking too fast. So do as you see me doing and remove the cooked chicken pieces add the chopped tomatoes after you remove the chicken pieces it just looks like it needs some more oil I just put in about half a quarter cup of oil now I'm adding the salt 
which is half of the tablespoon because we already salted the chicken with the other half so now use a spoon like this I add a tablespoon of distilled white vinegar you can use red wine vinegar if you you know you can use soda whatever whatever flavor whatever vinegar you are accustomed to you can use it it's those gauges on four medium low just gonna use a spoon and stir cook these tomatoes for about a minute between two minutes the objective for this part is to kind of break down the tomato before you add the water all right a minute between after a minute between two you add half cup of water this little spoon that I'm using measures quarter cup so in all I'm using half cup of water add it stir it in add the pepper if you're using red pepper or shillet, shredded pepper now would be a good time to add it you can use like half a teaspoon of shredded pepper what I'm gonna do spicy chicken tomato stew so look for that one I know I'm gonna do it because this meal I'm gonna cook it again I love this meal I'm gonna be cooking this meal these meal that I'm doing lately a lot alright so use the pans lid cover the cover the saucepan properly stove gauge is on four medium low allow all right gonna watch your pot keep the lid on you can stir it like you see me doing after three minutes with the lid on I didn't open it I did not open it within the time now would be a good time to remove the pepper all right so this is what it looks like kind of stir your pot in and thicken the stew once the stew starts to stick to the pot's bottom that's a sign to say it's ready all right i'm gonna let it stay for two more minutes just put the lid on and allow all right now it's five minutes a full five minutes this is what you want you want a thick nice juicy stew tomato stew i do have a tomato stew different which is a vegan recipe if you want to see that go and look for it all right so that's it you finish once the stew starts sticking to the to the, to the pot's bottom that's a sign to say it's ready all right you turn the stove off and now you add your cooked chicken pieces to your tomato stew and then stir it in ever so gentle ever so gently use the pan's lid over the saucepan until serving for serving stir your pot in it's best serve now you take a scoop of this delicious looking chicken tomato stew and place it on spaghetti just me it's best eating with spaghetti or, or um, it's pasta whatever pasta you want to use but spaghetti I'm recommending you have this meal with this is chicken tomato stew visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe subscribe like share you should try cooking this meal yourself and when you do I know you're gonna come I'm hoping you'll come back and leave your comments chicken tomato stew look out for a spicy chicken tomato stew this recipe is new I was not influenced by any body or any other recipe it's all me so if somebody just cooking similar to this I didn't know so I'm calling it new all right so it looks it's delicious as how it looks take my word for it that's all I can say take my word for it oh yes Parmesan I was gonna buy some Parmesan and sprinkle over it but the lights on my car is up and I need to go to the I need to go to tax office and kind of pay for it 
Yesterday I went and tax office was full to the brim. So I decided I'm not gonna wait. So now I can't go anywhere because my license is my, my car license is expired. I'm not gonna chance it because I don't want a ticket. So that's why I wasn't able to go anywhere and buy the parmesan because I really wanted to sprinkle the parmesan on this and I know it would have been lovely with it. This is tangy. It's new. The chicken is the chicken is flavorful. I can taste the herbs. It's just all one blend of a lovely meal, which I call chicken tomato stew simple name this is not tomato sauce tomato sauce method is similar I'm sure they add sugar and some other rest of stuff to, this, to sauce but this is a stew it's bursting with flavors and it's it's delicious with the, with the spaghetti. You can probably eat it with any long noodle. There's so many different types. They have the flat one and so forth. I know the names, but. Get your favorite brand, Parmesan, you know, powdered cheese. Enjoy. Bye. Yeah, man!